Hi. All right. <laughs> so first of all, if anyone here uh, is not sure if their business needs social media, then you talk to me later, because this is not for you, this speech. Because everyone has to know that in 2017, social media is very important, no matter what your business is. That's very important. And now we're just going to discuss some of the questions that you know, might help you understand why you need it and how to use it and stuff like that. But if the question is, do I need it? Yeah, the answer is yes, you need it. Now, there's a couple of questions that you might have. I will, I'll, throw all, I'll throw them all out there, and then we'll you know, dissect them one by one. The first question is, who is best suited to create and manage your social media platform? Okay, and when, I, when I say social media platform, I mean, generally means Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, sometimes Pinterest, and G, uh, you know, Google Plus, and stuff like that, depending on your industry. But the, the big four are gonna be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, which even though it's not a social media platform, it's important to be on LinkedIn and to utilize your LinkedIn um, profile properly. The next question, obviously, is what kind of content you should be placing on your social media platforms. Um, what is the ultimate goal of a social media platforms? Easy question, not an easy answer. Um, how do I determine the ROI? This is if you're a financial guy, everything's ROI. So mm -hmm. how do I determine the ROI? There's got to be a way to do that on social media. Um, next question would be, how do I best utilize social media as a customer service platform? And that's something that people don't realize is very important. Another question we're going to discuss is who your target audience is. And a little hint, the answer is never everyone. <laughs> because if you try to be everything to everyone, you know nothing to nobody. Oh. Remember that. So you always got to figure out who your target audience is, and then you've got to do the right things to, you know, to target that. Um, next question we're going to discuss is how do I best utilize social media? Um, you know, just how much time and money and energy do I need to invest into social media. And the final question we're going to discuss is, what is my social media end game? Okay, that's just to keep those in mind as we proceed over here today. So let's start with the first question. And if anyone has questions, please feel free to interrupt. This is, like I said, a conversation, not a speech. I'm not good at speeches. I'm better yeah. at a writer. But when we have a conversation, I'm good at talking. Um, what is the best, who is best suitable to create your social media platform? What would you say? Myself. That's right. There's nobody is better than you. Thanks to Lori Vassar. That's right. Nancy, Nancy can never, no one else can be as good of a Nancy as Nancy can be. Right? So if you can do it yourself, you should be able to do it yourself, then do it yourself. I mean, there's not, there's, again, social media is your voice, it's the voice of your company, and no one could be as good as you can. That being said, there are certain people who just won't be able to do it for whatever reason. Either they don't have patience, they don't have time, they don't have energy or they're just lazy of various reasons. So they go ahead and they, they either hire someone or they appoint someone within their company to do it. Now, it's important that if you do hire someone to do it, that that person or people, better one person, again, because if it comes a few people, then the voice that keeps changing. Mm -hmm. Remember, social media, think of it as a voice, your voice, your company's voice. So as long as you're consistent in everything you do, if it's you or the person doing it, you'll develop a brand recognition and you, you'll develop a voice. If there's, you know, just, just hodgepodge of today Nancy did it and tomorrow Lori did it and tomorrow Joe did it, it's just going to be a bunch of cut and paste stuff. It's not going to have a voice. So mm -hmm. remember that. So you should be doing it. If it's not you, the person doing it should be the dedicated person on your team or the person you hired to do it should be the one doing it. Um, <clears throat> now, if you must have someone else do it, just keep in mind a couple of tips I'm going to give you to remember. The person that's handling your message must understand your message clearly. Mm. Every company has a message, whether you're a therapist or a weight loss or a financial, no matter what you do, if you sell a product or service, you got a message. If you don't have a message, well, then we should rewind and create your message and then start, start again. But whatever your message is, the person handling social media has to understand your message. If I ask you what you do, you'll tell me you sell cosmetics, right? There's a lot of people selling cosmetics. Right? There's obviously more to what you do than just, you know, you know, maybe line, right? Okay, so whatever that message is, whether it's to help people or whether it's mm -hmm. to, you know, a specific uh, emotional connection to, to your product. So the person doing your social media has to understand that, understand that clearly. That's a good um, point. You know, that's a good point, Nancy, with your product. There is an emotional connection. I never, oh, yeah, I never would have thought to use that word. Right. Oh, what there's a great always, 
an emotional people look and they're upset no matter what you do but especially with hers because the people that buy her products that's right they're covering up they're dealing with a loss scars yeah sure absolutely but again there's always emotional but you can be selling potato chips you gotta find that emotional connection and that's part of your game because you know we'll get to that a little later there's that no like trust factor that we talked about all right everything today is people do business with or buy products from or utilize the services of people they know, they like, and they trust. And is a, is a short, you know, it, it goes in that sequence. You know, they'll, they'll get to know you, they'll hopefully like you, and then they'll trust you. Once they trust your brand, you and your brand, then you have them for life. Mm -hmm. So everything you do, is, you gotta remember that emotional connection. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, crazy emotions of, uh, you know, crying and hugging each other, but there's something pulling your product, your service to them. Okay, usually there's going to be a face to that person, you know, a company face, whether it's you and your company or the people, your, your, your clients, your staff, but there's got to be a connection. Now, when they post, this applies to you or the person they're posting, at least 50%, I mean, it's better if it's more than 50%, but at least 50% of the content should be um, unique um, content. Not uh, like cut and paste stuff, not borrowed content. I mean, it's okay to borrow and you know share stuff from other people, but if after a while all you're doing is just sharing and just copying and pasting and just copying what other people are doing, there's nothing unique about you, right? It means if you're not writing your own thoughts, mm -hmm. it can be your own quote, it can be your own article, it could be your own picture, it could be your if fifty percent of the content minimum needs to be your own. It means they won't find it anywhere else. Right? If everything they find by you, they can just do a little Google searching and find it elsewhere or find where you got it from. Mm -hmm. then they don't really need you and that's an important thing to remember so this is more of an issue to remember when someone else is doing your, your social media because it's very convenient sometimes people oh they remember oh I didn't post today let me let me find something whereas when you post on your own you're more selective mm -hmm. so again when, when, when someone else is doing it for you remember to make sure they understand that <clears throat> the content has to be unique um, it's important when you post social media stuff, it should be a, like consistent intervals. Now, people who follow you, or they like you or follow you, or right, gonna be, you'll be in their feed, want to see you there often enough that they remember that you're alive and your brand sticks in their head. If they're going to post once a month only and you pop up, it, you're, it's useless. If you're going to post too often, it might not be good either. But whatever it is, it should be on you know steady. It's like <clears throat> when you go to a website, a news website, whatever it is, whether it's CNN or Fox, whatever, wherever you're, right, whatever side of the aisle you're on, if you go there every day and it's the same headline, after a while you're going to stop going there. It's all, right, that's, you want to see new and fresh. So that, not that they're going to your page often, but whenever they get there or they want to see you just post something new, if they're still going to see, you know, oh, we're just having a Christmas sale or, right, and we're already <laughs> holding in the summer, that means that you're... You're not taking your company seriously. Why should they? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, like we said before, one of the important aspects of social media is to foster engagement with your followers. Okay, it's not just a it's not a bulletin board. It's not just a, a place to, to post up that you have nowhere else to post them. You're trying to engage with your followers. <clears throat> One of the ways you can engage with your followers is look at their comments, see what they're doing, understand what they're asking for, what they're saying, what they don't like, and you develop a, a, a sense of what, what it is that they like. Thank you, Mike. So, the person who's doing your social media review, whether, again, whether it's a, a, an employee or a company you hired to do it, needs to be not just post stuff, they need to be in tune to what are people liking, what are they not liking, how are they liking it, are they, are they using the smiley, are they using the sad face, are they actually commenting, are they sharing, and this is all data that's available on most of the sites, and so again, if you're not doing it, the person doing it needs to be in tune to what's going on, because it, it helps you understand what, what people are liking, what they're not liking, and what they're liking, you got to give them more of, what they're not liking, we got to fine tune. Again, this is all common sense, but stuff that we've got to put out there. Um, again, there's got to be a hands-on approach to social media. Meaning every time someone comments, whether you like the comment or not, you got to respond. Now, not always do you have to respond publicly. Sometimes you can just private message a person, but anyone who leaves a message on your social media deserves a response. 
even if they're not asking you a question, as a business owner who wants to show that you're engaged and you, your company has a pulse, mm -hmm. if someone says a, a positive comment, there's nothing wrong with responding you know, publicly and thanking them for stopping by. If it's negative, you know, you can private message them and say, listen, I'm sorry that you feel that way. What can I do to, you know, solve the problem or whatever? Mm -hmm. But don't ignore people. Half the time, <clears throat> or more than half the time, people leave comments, all they want to do is be recognized. Once they're recognized, the grievances almost, almost always disappear. It's not the grievance that bothers them, it's they're not being recognized. So, so like we said, we'll get to that more a little later about, <clears throat> social, about um, customer service. But again, it's an opportunity to engage with your clients or potential clients. You'd be surprised. Someone could be leaving a negative comment. You give them a nice response privately, they'll become a client because they just, just for the fact that you actually took them seriously. Um, <clears throat> question number two we had was, what is the objective of social media? What would you say the objective is by asking? Took on him today. Me? Yeah. I would think branding and and uh, obviously. For, for us, we, we want social media to try and attract new clientele, right? Let okay. people know what we're all about, create a brand. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, you know, I guess everybody's, every field is different. Or every, you know, for me, that's not, for me, social media has less to do with my brand than it is to uh, share the knowledge that I have in my field, to educate, motivate, and inspire people to take care of their health and their weight. And by that, just building a reputation as somebody who posts good quality stuff in my area of expertise, and I hate to call myself an expert, I'm, I'm not, but you know what I'm saying? That's really why I do it. And if I get a client out of it because they see constantly that I'm consistently posting things that are relevant, that are meaningful, that are helpful, that are current, that if they have a weight problem with someone in their family, they say, you know something, there's this, there's this lady that... She's always posting about this stuff. She writes really, really good stuff, and she never talks about sales. She never talk, She never pitches for business, but she knows her stuff. Maybe you might want to check her out. That's why I do it, me personally. Does that, right. Is that part of the answer? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, again, there's no right or wrong answer yeah. to this thing, but it's important to understand because once you understand what why social media can do, you'll, it, it helps you figure out what kind of post to post. Mm -hmm. Let's just, you know, some, some of the um, more you know, the simpler answers to the question is to drive... Um, to drive traffic, traffic to your, to your website, website yeah. right? You have a company website. <laughs> Most people today might not find that unless they find their social media. That in itself is a thing. So right. some of the posts you should be posting are, you know, should have your your website address at the bottom. But, you know, check out more on our website, things like that. Another idea of social media objective is to build your brand, like like Anthony said, right? You got to build your brand um, among the various demographics, right? You know, you might think that everybody knows you or or wants what you have to offer, that might not be the case, right? You, branding is a, is a lifelong objective. It's not just, you know, Coca-Cola is branded, but they keep branding themselves. Right. Because you don't keep branding yourself, your brand will be taken over by the next big thing, right? And again, one of the advantages of social media is that it levels the playing field. You mm. and Coca-Cola have the exact same platform. That is the only media um, platform that is that way today. Right, you don't need you don't need that much money or you don't need that resources. You just gotta utilize it right. Right, mm -hmm. Coke has the same Facebook page as you do, and yeah, they probably have a, an army of people posting and <laughs> researching. But ultimately, you you can be smarter than them. And in a way, people want to engage with you as opposed to them because they feel that you're you know more personal. Again, social media could be a place where you um, promote certain sales and products, but you don't want to overdo that either because. You know, we'll get to that a little later, but I'll just put it in there now. Social media is not a sales platform. It's a marketing platform. That's a very, very, it's an area where people don't get, and they use it as a sales platform. And what happens is, when you push it as a sales platform too much, is you get looked at as a, as a salesman, and you know what happens to salesmen, right? Nobody's interested. <laughs> right? I have a question. Yeah, sure. What, what about, I know that a lot of these platforms are starting, um, and Facebook does it, where you could actually do sales online. You sell product on there. So like I said, there's nothing wrong with doing some sales, okay. but you can't. You don't transform your page into a sales bulletin board, mm -hmm. right? If every time I come to your page, all I see is that you're you're hounding me. Yeah. I mean, let's let's take a step back. Let's you go to a, a networking event. Mm -hmm. There's 30 people there. The, the biggest mistake most of those people in the room do is being too salesy, right? All they want is to they came into the room with 30 business cards. They want to make sure to give out 30 business cards and walk away with a pile of business cards everywhere in the room, right? 
and sell whatever they're, it is they're selling. No one's interested in buying, mm -hmm. right? I'm here to network. Again, social media, I'm not here to buy. I'm here to, to engage, learn. I'm here to, to learn, learn about you. Right. Yeah, occasionally you can throw in a sale, I have no problem if you sell cosmetics. Obviously you sell cosmetics. But if every post you do is less to do about why cosmetics are important than you know, the human interest side of it and the, the, the emotional side of it, so just buy, 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 sale, 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 I get that from the local paper, right? I don't need that from you. <coughs> so again, there's nothing wrong with you know, an occasional sale done subtly and done tactfully. <laughs> But don't don't turn your page into like you know, you know, buy our product, buy our service now or never. You know, hurry up. You know, the ending. Chill out. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's okay to have that occasionally, but don't. That should not be the overall gist of your page is selling your product or service. But just remember that everything you post should be from the perspective of what do the people reading your page want to see. You want to do sales, so obviously you want to sell. But let's let's be honest, they don't want to buy. So just give them, educate them, give them free education, give them free. You know, you want to share stuff to other people if it makes sense. If they want to read it, they'll read it, right? There's nothing wrong with free knowledge. There's nothing wrong with giving away free knowledge. It's, it's, people are always afraid to give away free knowledge. I know personally, I, every time I write articles about any topic, yeah. whatever it is, right, and I, I'm very liberal, you know, I give away ideas and tips and all that stuff. So people say, you know, so why do people need you for it, right? Why would they hire you if you're giving it all away? Ultimately, the way the human psychology works is that if you give away free knowledge, when they need more, they'll come to pay for it, right? Mm -hmm. There's always more, mm -hmm. right? In whatever field, you gotta be the expert on whatever it is you do, right? So if you establish yourself as the authority expert in your field, people eat it up. And then, it might be a year, two, three, seven, when they need more of that, they'll remember who to come back to. And again, that's one of the objectives of social media. Just don't be afraid, just give away tips, knowledge, you know, ideas. Um, <clears throat> another objective of social media, um, is being simply available to answer customers' questions. You know, a website has a contact us page, but it's not immediate, right? You, they might wait 24 hours, 48 hours to get a response. Social media is more, even though it can t you don't necessarily see it right away, people feel like, you know, he's right there, right? And they see that you respond to them, you can have a conversation, right? Right in the site, you can have a, a, a private message, right? So it gives people a, a sense of engagement with you and your product, your service. And that's um, some of the objectives. Obviously, once you determine your objective is more uh, fine tailored to your specific industry, you got to figure out a strategy and a plan. Take a 30-day calendar, write down all the types of stuff you're going to post, and write down the dates when you're going to post them, and make sure you stick to that. I mean, every Wednesday should be knowledge day, and every Thursday should be a sale day, and every Sunday should be a share a client's day or a testimonial day. After a while, people will stop looking for your stuff. Yeah, that's a good idea. Right? When you, people are looking for your stuff, as opposed to just having to pop up on their feed, then you've made it, right? So if you get people used to, you know, the whole th throwback Thursday thing, people look for certain stuff like that, right? Just think of it from a business perspective. What do people want to see? Again, always put yourself on the other side. What do they want to see? I have a lot of things I want to say. It doesn't matter what I want to say. It's that, what do they want to hear? Like any business thing, you got to sell what the client or the customer wants to buy, right? Question number three, who is my target audience? And this is always a tough one because we always want to, what do you mean, everyone? But it's not everyone. It's really, really, really not everyone. You need to identify who your audience is. I mean, for example, if you sell dentures, right, or hearing aids, and you're going to target the 18 to 36 crowd, it's not going to work. I mean, there are, I'm sure, one or two out there that might wear dentures for whatever reason, but, but that's not your crowd, right? So you got to figure out, and that was a simple example, but again, who is your, I mean, you sell financial services, right? What? You sell financial services? <laughs> that joke. Just kidding. Yeah, I got that it. joke, hearing it, yeah. But financial services. So your target are people who have the money to start investing, right? You're, the college kids are not your target now, right? right? Their parents are. So again, so Facebook, whether the types of posts and the ads, if you use Facebook ads, which is I'm not going to talk about today, but it's a good idea to use, and you can target that, you know, geographically, etc. Got to know your audience. Figure out who your audience is and target them. Again, what do they want to hear? Let's say you're, you're probably, I would guess, like the 25 to 55 year old is a good, a good uh, demographic for you, or older. Well, yeah, but I also, I also have many overweight kids referred by pediatricians. Okay, but, so yes, again, but, it, it, but again, yeah. if, even if you're doing the kids, yeah. most likely. I don't know that the kids are going to be reading your, oh, no, no, your no, Facebook today. page. No. Yeah, even though there are kids are everywhere today, but I don't think Facebook is where they are right now. No. More college and up. But 
again, un un know your demographic, understand what they like. And not every post that you post has to be, you know, specific to your end to your business. Mm -hmm. I mean, it should be loosely related on some level, but sometimes it could even just be, you know, what happened today in history. You know, it's interesting, right? I mean, it shouldn't be totally about, you know, uh, pseudo-economics, but I'm saying, but it should be something that the crowd that you talk to are interested in. Not only are they, they're not only, you know, narrowly interested in losing weight, mm -hmm. right? They're human beings out there, and you know them, and from your interaction with them, you know there are other things in, in the world that might interest them, so it's okay if sometimes that it comes from you, that knowledge. Your page should become a place that they feel comfortable in. That's the ultimate bottom line. Um, here's, I'll just give you a couple of questions to ask yourself. Again, I'm not going to go into the answers, but this is just ask yourself these questions and it might help you figure out what kind of content is right for your audience. Um, what problem is your business solving? Right, that's a very simple question, but it doesn't have a simple answer. Every one of you should say, what, a, what problem is solving? Now, once you figure that out, post stuff that lends to solving that problem. No, don't always say, well, I can solve your problem, come to me and make an appointment. No. <laughs> Just but think of what kind of problems you're building, your business is solving, and then posts that address those areas sure, yeah. will be interesting to the people that are reading your page. Hmm. Um, consider your competition. You know, everyone has competition on some level. What problems are they not solving? Right? Or, or how, how are you different um, from your competition? Why are certain clients going there and not, and not to you? Again, not always will you have definitive answers to all these questions, but these are good ways to, under, to, to just get the mind rolling. You know, why is it that he's full and I'm, I'm struggling? You know, try, take a look. Check out his Facebook page. Check out his other page. Check out his website. What is he, offer, what is he not offering? What, what kind of niche could you fill that he's not filling? Again, these are all just things that jog the brain of types of, of you know, content that might be helpful for you to be posting. Even though we're talking about social media, I mean, some of the stuff might, might be beneficial for your websites, for your brochures, and other stuff as well. I'm just saying, but it's always good to think mm. outside the box. What are the characteristics of your potential customers? That's a question you should be asking yourself. I'm really, again, the answer is never everybody. You know, try to think. Hmm? So can you repeat that question? What are the characteristics of your potential customers? It could be someone who has a scar from an accident. It could be someone that, you know, whatever. You know, whatever works for your business. But... Again, and whatever the answer you come up with, so okay, so what can I post that will be interesting to someone in that, in that space? Um, another question you can ask yourself is, what is their lifestyle, right? Every segment of you know, clients has a lifestyle, right? You know, if she's selling certain types of makeup, she might be servicing certain women on certain, you know, you know, rung on a ladder or whatever. You're definitely, you're a financial guy, right? Mm -hmm. you know, the lifestyle is not going to be the same as, the, you know, people living on... So you got to figure out what is their lifestyle and what are the people in that lifestyle interested in. And then that's okay to bring that stuff into your page. Um, <clears throat> now, are you, condu uh, are you um, conducting surveys of your clients? That's very important in any industry, almost. But remember that social media is a great place to do that. Because if someone has not built in, you can actually do a, a survey on Facebook. Don't do it too often, but occasionally it's really good to do. It just gets people answering questions. You'd be surprised. The answers you get from those could really help you understand the, you know, the psyche of your, your followers, your clients, the future clients. Um, now, we touched on this a drop, but we'll just go over it quickly. So what kind of content is right for you? So I'm just going to give you a couple of quick examples of types of content. Obviously, everything you do got to think out of the box. I hate that term because it's overused, but it you know describes what we got to do. Um, obviously, your own blog posts. There's not like I said before. Nothing is more gives you more credibility and likability, and it gives your business a pulse than having something to say unique. You have a blog. No one else in the world has that blog post unless you plagiarize. That's a whole different story. <laughs> All right, but if you write your own stuff, people will read it because they're not finding it elsewhere, right? So yes, your blog posts are important to post and to share, even if you post it on a different platform, you know, WordPress or even LinkedIn, bring it in to Facebook. You know, if you have a LinkedIn post, don't think that it, it, don't think it just belongs on LinkedIn. Share it everywhere. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. Um, it's okay to, to share content from other people in your network. Again, don't overdo it because then you become a sharer as opposed to a, you know, a unique person, but it's okay. And actually, 
um, people respect that, I think, that you're not afraid to share your colleague stuff. You know, sometimes people are afraid, oh, I'm going to share here, but I'm not good enough. No, but the fact that you share what you feel your clients might enjoy is important. So everyone has a network, be it on LinkedIn or, or elsewhere. If they post something interesting that you think your clients will benefit from, it will mean share that stuff. Um, if you give events, workshops, seminars, photos. Photos work a lot. People love to see that you're not just in business, that you're actually, you know, sharing your knowledge with others. Not that, you know, even if, if the picture itself is not sharing something, the fact that there was a seminar and that you were the speaker or you were the headliner, it, it gives you a certain amount of, um, you know, likability and that's important to share. Um, testimonials from clients are great. Yeah. Nothing speaks better than a real testimony. Make sure they're real. If they let you use their name, it's always good to get uh, permission. Sometimes, you know. Um, if there's an event of interest that you think your clients might enjoy, even if it's not specifically related to your industry, absolutely share it. You know, if there's a, a carnival in the, in the neighborhood and you're a local business, wh why, why not have them find it out through you? And then go and then are excited and then why not? Right? Or there's, always, there's no shortage of events, there's always stuff going on. Again, whatever you do, remember with you know the rule of thumb, don't overload your page with things that don't belong there, but occasionally throw in different stuff that makes it more interesting and exciting. Um, inspirational quotes are be very careful with. Now, sometimes they're okay and depends on your specific business, but very often these are recycled over and over and over and it just tells people that you have nothing else to post. If it's specifically you know, relevant to something you're doing and it makes sense, go for it. But don't, it, it's a lazy way of filling up your page. You know, let's find an inspirational quote and dump it on there. So if it works, Specifically and occasionally, that's okay, but don't overdo it. Now, this for you would be important. Uh, sales and coupons and contests are, are good. But again, on the sales end of things, keep it to, to not more than 10% of your content because you don't want to become too salesy. But again, in your specific industry, it makes sense to have sales occasionally, so definitely share them. I'd rather see contests or things like that and coupons as opposed to sales. Even when you do the sales, try to Try to make a, a, a short article out of it as opposed to just sale with right. 17 exclamation points, you know? <laughs> it's whatever. Okay, the next question we had was how do I utilize social media as a customer service vehicle? And this is something a lot of people don't realize and it's really important. And we touched on some of it. I'll just reiterate a little bit. Um, first of all, no matter what your business is, you need to make sure that you are meeting the needs of your clients. It sounds oversimplified, but if, whatever your business is, you need to make sure you're meeting the needs of your clients. Now, if you're a therapist, then you know what that means, and if you're in, a, in cosmetics, you know what that means. Everyone knows what that means. But make sure you're not meeting, what, what I mean to say, not you're meeting your sales quota or your output. Make sure you gotta be meeting the needs of your clients. Social media is a platform where you can do that. Um, you can always check in with your clients to see how things are doing via social media. Sometimes it's better to do it, like, you, like we discussed before. An email sometimes might seem too formal and they won't respond to you. A check-in, even though you don't want to use the words uh, touching base, <laughs> right? but what, whenever you touch base with them without using the words touching base, yeah. you can do it through social media, whether it's a DM on Instagram or, or a message on, on, on Facebook. It's less intimidating. You know. Do it. Again, don't, you don't want to make it too social and too uh, chatty, you know, you want to stay professional. But just a, a quick check-in might be better from, you know, through a social media platform as opposed to an email. Just keep that in mind. Um, showing appreciation to your clients, however, you know, possible and whenever possible is a great thing. Nobody will be upset at you for saying thank you or for saying thanks, I appreciate your business. Use social media to do that, can, like you're saying. It could, it, that's what the check-in could be. You say, you know, we're just going through our records. I appreciate that you're a client. You don't even have to go and please come back and schedule your appointment. They'll, they'll schedule on their own you know, after a while. Yeah, with a weight loss client, I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I don't want to let anybody know they're a client of mine. Okay, but they, they wouldn't to, appreciate it. Any client that you had, yeah. you can show them appreciation. Yeah. Whether, you know, he means directly. Yeah. Just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can, you know, I appreciate that you chose, you know, my service as opposed to a guy yeah. down the block, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to talk about yourself. You don't have to ask them to make an appointment. Just show appreciation just for 
its own sake, and that works. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, re- uh, refer to your clients. Oh, that's great. If you you know you're in one business, they're in a different business. Yeah, they're do. a client. Refer to them. Yeah. Right. That nothing works. You know, as good as that. But again, social media is a great way. LinkedIn is is perfect for that. Right. On LinkedIn, they even have a you know a feature that you can share, share profiles with each other. But even not even on Facebook or other places, you can you say, hey, look, look, I found this cool Facebook page. We might you like it. Right? You always want people to like your Facebook page. Did you ever tell people to like someone else's Facebook page? It works, right? Um, now, how do I determine the ROI of my social media presence? Now, this is a tough one because, like we said before, social media is not a sales tool. Okay, I'll say it once again for emphasis because it's important. Social media is not a sales tool, meaning, you know, I know this from personal client experiences. Uh, they, we set up a, a, a social media platform for them. One or two months go by, and they get frustrated that you know they don't see direct correlation between I'm, I'm spending time, I'm posting stuff, I don't see the clients coming in, right? Because they're not going to see the clients coming in from social media. That's not how it works, right? You're not going to see clients coming in from any marketing tools. Marketing is marketing, and sales are sales. Yes, they got to work together, but they have different objectives, and it, it's important to know what's what's what. Um, Let me give you a couple of examples just, just to clarify what I mean. You know, the difference between sales and marketing. Now, sales is what closes the deal. Sales is what brings the money. Sales focuses on individuals. Okay? Marketing does not focus on individuals. It focuses on um, generating interest of your brand. Uh, it focuses on the, it, it, it determines what the customer wants. Marketing does that. Marketing gets the word out. Marketing is the is the battle plan, so to speak, mm-hmm. right? It, it builds the no like trust, like we spoke before. That's all marketing stuff. Sales then takes builds on marketing and then generates sales, right? A sales. If you have a room of fifty people, and I'm getting up at doing a sales pitch, it will be, you know, semi um, productive. Whereas if I take one guy to the side and after he knows about my stuff, say, listen, now let's, 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 let's cr- crunch the deal, right? How does it work, Anthony? One-on-one better sales than, than a group? Why do you think that is? It just is. I mean, they get that, the attention. They get to actually, it's more specific to them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's personalized. It's, yeah, it's yeah. personalized. Exactly. That, in, in, a, in a nutshell, because the only way sales work is when it's about me on the client. I'm the right the consumer. Mm-hmm. If it's about me, then I'm interested in, in spending money. I'm interested in buying. I'm interested in being sold too. Right? When it's a group here, it's not about me. Now it's about the thing, the product, the service, the sale. Hmm. Not so interested in right. But they have to know that information. So that's what marketing. Marketing is 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 the rah rah, and sales is the you know is the the ka-ching. The ka-ching. There you go. <laughs> right? action. So. That being said, social media is a marketing tool. No marketing tool is going to give you an ROI because ROI is a, sa- is a result of sales. So if, with that perspective, yeah, if after six to eight months you know, of, of doing a, a successful social media campaign, your company is losing money, something's wrong. Mm-hmm. Right? doesn't mean necessarily that it was the fault of the social media, but something is wrong. But when you do proper marketing and social media is an important aspect of that marketing, you will see slow and steady growth in your company. You can't look at one month because you know how that works, but you look at a six to eight month period after you do decent marketing slash social media, you should see some sort of growth. And you, gotta, you know, there's a, a line they say in marketing that 50% of the marketing works and 50% doesn't work and no one knows which is which. <laughs> right? And that's, it's humorous, but it's also true. <laughs> Because mar- there's no, marketing doesn't have, has no way of giving you an ROI to each specific piece. Mm-hmm. A marketing plan right, has to match a, an ROI of sales. And if that's not working, then you got to look at it more you know, with a fine tooth and figure out what's not working. Um, the bottom line, um, I think that's all. Any questions? Do you have any questions? I don't. I do. That was you good. do. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so... Because for me, I'm all over because my customer, think of an HSN QVC customer, you know, women who are getting older have certain imperfections. So my daughter, who's in her 20, almost 21, mm-hmm. said, Mom, I want to take over your Instagram account because 
that's a totally different customer. And she just feels like there's no, you know, like what I'm doing on Facebook now is not quite what we should be doing to get like this younger customer engaged on Instagram. Okay, so generally, everything you post on one platform can be posted on other platforms with a caveat of it has to be done right. Meaning, you can just take the same text and copy and paste into all the platforms, it doesn't work that way. Each one has a certain, its own quirks, its own things that work, hashtags and different things like that. But usually you can modify every post to work for the other platform. If, like in your case, you know, sometimes it happens that you know, you'll have a certain audience that's enjoying your Instagram stuff and it's not the same audience on Facebook, yeah, you would have to totally develop a different strategy, mm -hmm. which might be your case. I don't know the specifics of your business, but if the Instagram crowd that you're, you're generating that is following you and liking your stuff is a certain de demographic and your Facebook is a different one, absolutely, you're gonna need two separate uh, plans. It's not usually the case, but yeah, it's not it's not set in stone that it that it works. Most you guys businesses, it should be pretty much the same. Yes. But again, but don't copy and paste, or oh, oh, and don't use uh, a Hootsuite. Don't use stuff that posts for you because they don't do it right, and it, it just people can tell. People are not as stupid as they look. You know, your clients will know if you're not invested. You're not investing time in in making your social media work. They're not going to invest the time to be a follower and be and be engaged in it. They know. They just know. I I do use it. I use I use the dashboard. I post a lot. I post right. at least fifteen times a day on my Twitter account. But um, but I'm actively engaged. Okay. Like actively said. engaged, and I make sure that um, you know. Well, not during the day because I never really have time with clients. But I'm actively engaged during the week. I go back to what I posted. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I I do respond to every comment that co would come in. I share plenty of, I share everybody's work as often as I can. Mm -hmm. And just to your point uh, earlier, I made a note here. So while I may post, say, say I post 15 times a day, let's just say on Twitter, mm -hmm. I make sure that uh, maybe seven or eight of those are mine. They are uh, always original, always, Good. all my content is my own. But I always share at least three to five um, curated content from other great things that I've read during the week, having to do with health, weight loss, obesity, fitness, other, other people's. I always hat tip them, always. Good. And then I post at least five other posts just on business. Listen, because mm -hmm. even though I'm in weight loss, I'm a businesswoman. Exactly. So I do post about marketing, finance, social media, and I and the, the work of others, and I hat tip them as well. Sure. So, so I do use Hootsuite, but I don't just like throw it up there and I never okay. go back. I mean, if you're on top of it. Oh, I didn't know. I definitely am. From my experience, I found that people use Hootsuite. It doesn't post right, it doesn't post with the right picture, it just doesn't work always. It takes, for example, it will take a post that I put on Facebook and I will automatically put it on Twitter, very often without, without the right hashtag, very often without the right photo. Well, Again, you have that link preview. Um, and Again, if you're on top of it and using it right, that's yeah, right. I think don't I, just I think assume that you know, you know, automatically generate posts will do it for you. you know, like, I mean, I, I noticed in the topic of today's speech was um, DIY, which is yeah. yourself. Uh, Michael Camino left out the D, which is okay. No, that was me. That was my fault. Which is okay, but don't leave out. I'm saying yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. important part. You got to yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. The you got you got to be involved. I mean, you, if you do it for enough time, you can figure out a way to spend less than 20 minutes a day. Out. You don't need to spend your whole day. In the beginning, it will be tough, but once you get the hang of certain things, and and especially if you prepare in advance a month's worth of what has to be done each day, which is a very good idea. 20 minutes a day, you should be able to do everything you need to do. Yeah, I, I agree. Listen, you're talking, you're preaching to the choir. I yeah. preach to them all the, all the time. But even if you're very busy and even if you have to hire somebody. And maybe that your new assistant can start with that. But but then even so, then at some point, you you being the owner, the voice, the brand of your right. practice, mm -hmm. you've got to make a schedule that once a day for 15 minutes after supper with a cup of coffee, you're going to go to your social networks if, and you're going to see if anybody made a comment. Because your secretary really can't respond to people in right. your voice, you can't. Maybe she'll give them wrong information about your your service that you're offering. It's very dangerous. Right. I mean, I just I'm just saying, like you know, years ago when I first started this, and I'm not a rich person, but I understood the importance of social media. You know, seven eight years ago, and I was in the, I was paying someone almost eight hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. to do this to me, and then I started to learn more and more. And I said to myself, wait a minute, I'm feeding her all the stuff that I wanted to put on. She does, she's great at social media. She doesn't know my business. Exactly. How could she possibly talk for me? Mm -hmm. And then that's when I started getting more and more right. involved. And, is, and that is, we didn't touch on LinkedIn at all because that's yeah. a whole different thing, but that's extremely important on LinkedIn. Yeah. Even if someone else is running your LinkedIn yeah. account, you got to be very careful that they respond. They shouldn't respond to you. 
because that's you. Right. You know, LinkedIn is as your face on it. It's you know, you, today you're a financial advisor, and in a, in a two years now you can be a lawyer. <laughs> Whatever, I'd be unlikely, right? but it could happen. It could happen. <laughs> my, my point is, that doesn't mean that everything you've built on LinkedIn disappears. Because it's not about your business, it's about you on LinkedIn. That's why it's important to have a, a, you know, an accurate profile photo. It's important right. to have an accurate summary of who you are. Because ultimately, regardless of what you do for a living, LinkedIn is you in today's world. Yeah. And that no matter where your life takes you, it's going to continue to be you. That's why you know, you, when people you know, send you a message, respond as you, first person, like I said, it's a networking event. And no matter what you might be doing, you're getting to know people, you're building relationships. It's, it's not about liking and sharing and, and emojis. It's about building business relationships. That's what it's all about. You know, and you know, this is, this is really good. Great, thank you. Yeah, this is a very good presentation today. It really was very good.